entertainment, news, and politics. It's all right here with Michelle Meow. Welcome back to Swirl, your A through Z, covering the LGBT, LMNOP, and everyone in between show. I'm Michelle Meow, your host. You can like us on Facebook by searching Swirl Radio or follow us on Twitter, search or at Swirl Radio. So it was historical today as the Supreme Court of the United States continued to hear arguments in the Edie Windsor case and DOMA, or Defense of Marriage Act, and here to talk about what was heard in court in these past couple days is a lead senior counsel, or senior staff <laughs> lawyer, Chris Stoll, which is it? Senior staff attorney for the National Center for Lesbian Rights. That sounds about right, <laughs> and you are senior to me, senior something. <laughs> so, you know, I, I feel like everyone in the media... Chris, um, has just been so positive after, you know, today's hearing um, and with Edie Windsor there and her attorney, and it almost feels like it was victorious. But what was said that could lead to, to such an attitude? Well, first of all, there's no question that the last two days have been two of the most exciting days you could ever hope to have as a LGBT civil rights law geek like me. Um, these are two of the most important cases that we've ever had in the Supreme Court. And uh, based on the arguments today, it's looking uh, uh, pretty good for uh, DOMA to be struck down. Uh, based on the arguments yesterday, it's a, I think it's a little more uncertain what's going to happen. There's a, a good chance, I think, that the court will um, decide that uh, they should not uh, have heard the case and that Judge Walker's decision – uh, back in 2010, striking down Prop 8 should be allowed to stand, mm -hmm. and that should be the final decision in the case. So I'm a little confused, uh, and, and if you can clarify for the rest of us who might be confused and don't know, you know, legal terms very much. Um, Proposition 8 is a, a state issue, so it's a California-specific issue. Right. So I've been working on marriage equality in California since 2004, the summer, the, the, yeah. the, the winter of love uh, in at City Hall. Uh, and uh, we actually represented the plaintiffs in the successful challenge uh, under the state constitution that brought marriage equality to California uh, in 2008. Mm -hmm. And then just a few months later, Prop 8 was passed and took, right. that, took that away. And we were all you right. know, lying right. on the floor disheartened. So so if, you know, the decision is that the, the Supreme Court, you know, to, shouldn't have to rule or they don't have standing to rule and, um, you know, Judge Von Walker's decision stands, that only applies to California. Right. That would only apply to California and uh, Prop 8 would be gone. The state would be under an order not to enforce it anymore. And that in itself would be a huge victory. What about the ruling for, you know, the E.D. Windsor case? Now, that's a federal case, correct? That's a federal case, and, and the issue there is um, DOMA, which is a law that the federal government passed that says that even if a state permits marriage between same-sex couples, the federal government's not going to recognize that for any purpose. So you can't file joint tax returns. Uh, you can't uh, qualify as a couple for immigration purposes. Um, uh, you can't qualify as a couple for Social Security. And this is a challenge under the federal constitution to, to that law. And uh, if that's struck down, what that will mean is that married same-sex couples throughout the country in states where it's legal will be recognized uh, by the federal government as the same as every other married couple. So it doesn't necessarily mean that if it is or uh, if DOMA is found unconstitutional and struck down that everyone who wants to get married, um, you know, in any state can get married. Not at all. Not at all. We'll still be limited to the current states that we have, and that decision will not affect that at Great. all. Great. Good to know. So. So we still have a, a, a statewide issue here that we need to talk about. So there's some, there's currently like 11 states, right, that allow for marriage equality or same-sex states? I believe it's nine plus D.C. and some Indian tribes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. So, so it, it, you know, it, it, that's good to know because a lot of people actually think, and, and everyday people actually, like my mom, think that whatever the decision here in these two cases means it's the, the, the definite. But there's still some work to be done after the fact. Absolutely. Um, uh, it's pretty clear from Tuesday's arguments that we're not going to get the 50-state knockout punch that makes same-sex marriage uh, 
permitted in every state of the union. So that what that means is uh, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, our organization just filed a new lawsuit last week in New Mexico seeking the freedom to marry there under the state constitution. And uh, there are many, many other challenges that are pending around the country right now. Uh, and plus, we're going to need to do a lot of work in the legislatures. Well, speaking of your organization, the National Center for Lesbian Rights, Kate Kendall, your executive director, was at the Supreme Court, uh, you know, inside right there hearing the arguments as well as your legal director, Shannon Minter. In fact, we have a treat for you in, in which um, Shannon was quoted right out of the Supreme Court saying that uh, DOMA is dead. So we'll play a little clip of that <laughs> interview. Shannon Minter, Legal Director, National Center for Lesbian Rights. What do you feel in there today? I felt really encouraged today. I think it was clear that enough justices are really questioning whether the federal government had the right to enact a law like DOMA, and enough of them also have serious questions about whether there was any legitimate reason for the federal government to enact DOMA. I think we're going to win. I think the court is going to reach the merits on this case, and I think they're going to say that DOMA violates the federal constitution, probably for equal protection reasons. Any standing questions that seem problematic? That's from Shannon Minter. Well, that's so. great. And Shan Shannon, Shannon's the boss. He's the one who knows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I talked to him this afternoon. He was uh, absolutely uh, thrilled with how the arguments went today. That's amazing. So it's amazing stuff. So for right now, uh, we sit tight and we just wait. We just wait. So uh, what happens now is uh, the justices will, on Friday, have a conference with uh, only those nine people uh, in the room, uh, and uh, they will take an initial vote. And based on how those votes come out, the, the, just, the chief justice will assign uh, uh, a justice to write each opinion, and then we'll get a written decision uh, most likely by the end of June. The end of June, which yeah. is pretty much pride. Pretty much pride, and I do think since this is, these are two of the most important cases the court has this year, that it's probably going to be the last week of June. The last week of June, wow. San Francisco pride, New York pride, Seattle pride. I mean, yeah. you know, it's going, it's going to be so huge. We actually have to take a quick break, but I want to continue the conversation really quick after the break and um, talk about, you know, just a, a little more about, you know, the arguments specifically about a, a certain justice that uh, we were talking about before you came on. So can you stick around? Absolutely. All right, great. So we got to take a quick break. Don't go away. We'll be back with more of Marriage Equality Discussion. Michelle Miao with Swirl Radio.